going 10-8. What's up guys? This is a long overdue video about my attempts to urban camouflage building antennas or my home antenna or something like that. Something stationary. You camouflage it to make it blend in with your urban environment, your house, your property, or whatever. So in the last video, I tried to do that with a Jim Slim antenna. And this is one of them inside my garage right here right now. And this is an awesome antenna. I mean, you want you want true value, this is it right here. Inexpensive with plenty of uh, performance. But in my attempts to uh, camouflage this, it does not like to be inside, enclosed in fiberglass or PVC or nothing. It's gotta be in the open air, kinda like just how you see it right there. Uh, it's probably being detuned as we speak being inside the garage, but I use this as a scanner antenna But so no big deal and I'm getting pretty good uh, reception inside here This thing is black and thin and and appearance alone Would camouflage it in your urban environment in my opinion uh, I took it out to the trees out there and 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 when I was doing the last test and it's pretty hard to pick out I mean, it's well camouflaged. A little brown paint and green paint here and there. The non-flat uh, paint-based uh, spray spray paint, and this thing will disappear big time. So, in its present form, this is how it should be deployed: freewheeling, with no obstacles uh, around it. Like I said in my last testing, I was curious to see what the hell this thing is capable of, uh, as far as inside a fiberglass tube or whatever and it failed miserably it detuned it to the frequency that I was that it was uh, manufactured for so it wasn't even near the ballpark you would have uh, burnt up your transmitter if you use that antenna in that configuration so it was a disaster and I move on now let's see what the same testing will do with a regular whip antenna so uh, what I'm going to use is is this antenna here. It's a dual band 5 8 wavelength antenna. This is a quarter wave antenna but for VHF only. I'm going to use the dual bander because that's what I did in the last test before and I kind of wanted it to be similar. Also being a 5 8 wavelength antenna uh, it doesn't require a too much of a, of a ground plane. I'm using this little test bed as a, as a ground plane. This was pulled out of a bulldozer that was running 800 megahertz in its radio. So the ground plane is a uh, little less than six inches. For a VHF antenna, it's supposed to be the same uh, length as the, uh, as the whip itself. So it should be at least 16, 16 inches from back to forth. But with a 5 8 wavelength antenna, uh, you don't need that big of a footprint or you probably don't need a, grain pl a ground plane at all but having just a little bit of metal here about this diameter will help it by, by a little bit maybe 1 dB uh, of gain but this is I'm using this as a test platform because it's flat and I already modified it with an NMO mount okay let's start the test oh by the way this video is dedicated to AZ Papa Les for constantly reminding me to make this video. <laughs> Sorry buddy, uh, life gets in the way, you know. Alright, moving on. Okay, here's my 5 8 wavelength antenna there. And it's, uh, there's some metal nearby, but it's far enough to where it won't affect it at all. I already checked the other three uh, Materials there and there's no change as far as closeness to to the chain link fence here, so it's not going to interfere with it. So there is my test bed and my uh, and at 150 megahertz is tuned to, I get a minus 28 dB uh, return loss, and 451 it's at 40 dB, so that's pretty good. This particular antenna is for EMS fire. Uh, law enforcement in the uh, public safety frequency range so it's not a amateur uh, band antenna but it's it's the same crap is just the reference is just shifted up to the public safety frequency range so uh, it's it's like I said it's the same shit so there's my test bed and uh, I do recommend 5 8 
wavelength antenna for like a home antenna base because uh, it'll give you twice the power than the quarter wavelength and you wouldn't have to worry about a ground plane. I think I repeated that many times in other videos that I've made. I should repeat it all the time because those are like uh, rule of thumb rules when it comes to choosing an antenna and stuff like that. So I will repeat that more than once. ABS three quarter inch uh, pipe, regular household plumbing. So let's see if we could camouflage this with household plumbing if the freaking dog don't get in the way. All right. So there's my uh, PVC pipe there, and these are the results. It did shift uh, the frequency. It's kind of hard to tell from the screen here. And when the dog is like right here in front of me, get away. Anyway, uh, from 150 megahertz that it was designed and tuned for, it detuned it to 148.63 megahertz, almost at the upper range of the handband. And the dB uh, gain of this antenna has, or the efficiency of this antenna has uh, increased by 38 to 35. So that was kind of weird, but it changed frequency, but it, it gained uh, performance there, but in the wrong frequency. It's designed to do this frequency here. So that's on the VHF side. On the uh, UHF side, it detuned it from 451 to 427 on the PVC pipe. So it does detune it a little bit. Enough so to uh, make your antenna out of tuned. All right, let's move on to the black ABS there, sewage piping there. See if we could camouflage the antenna using that. So here we have the black sewage pipe ABS pipe there, camouflaging the antenna or enclosing in it. And the frequency hasn't changed from the PVC pipe results. So, PVC was 148, so was ABS. 427 on the UHF, 427 on the P ABS as well. But the only thing is, uh, the efficiency of the uh, antenna has decreased by 3 dBs here, from 35 to 32. Actually, it... And then uh, on the UHF side, it decreased almost by 10 dBs there. So the efficiency of the antenna has decreased whereas the uh, distortion of the uh, frequency itself hasn't. So, ABS, no go on camouflaging. Let's move on up to electrical PVC. So here's your gray pipe for uh, gray pipe v PVC. And mostly this is used for uh, electrical conduit and electrical household uh, uh, building voltages and stuff. That didn't make sense. But anyway, VHF has tuned, uh, went up in frequency to 149, and that's closer to my uh, 150 that we originally originally started with. Uh, that was 28 dBs of, gain, of uh, return loss, and 23, so the efficiency is still down, but within spec. I could probably tune into my uh, public safety frequency at this uh, range here, 149. So I'm um, somewhat within spec, but not like the original here. On UHF here, different story. It still remains at 427 at minus 34 dB uh, return loss. So I'm still out of uh, still out of spec as far as 451. So electrical PVC pipe, it's a no go as far as UHF, but it doesn't change much on the VHF side of the house. So if you're running a single band of VHF radio, th this might be a possibility for you. All right, let's move on to fiberglass. And this fiberglass section here was actually from a uh, tower antenna. So I'm using the industry standard crap that they use up on the hilltop. So let's see what this does. So there wasn't any change on the VHF side for the fiberglass. Fiberglass, it was 150 megahertz, it was tuned to. The original 150 that was up here. And I got 25 dBs of, of uh, return loss, which is still within spec, way within spec. And uh, the original was 28.8 dBs. On UHF, the original was 450 with nothing around it. 
and it still detuned the UHF frequency down to 427. It was pretty much consistent every time you want to wrap something around this dual band antenna here. Uh, the UHF side would detune down to 427. It's not even in the hand band anymore. Uh, that particular frequency is still, uh, what do you call it, uh, public safety around that area, but uh, who knows. Anyway, it doesn't, the UHF doesn't like fiberglass, but it does like the VHF. VHF does like the fiberglass. Uh, perhaps if this was only a, a, a dual, a single band antenna, it would perform a lot better, but trying to uh, camouflage a dual band antenna will not work. Your VHF will be somewhat stable. This went from 150 to 148, 148 again and 149 and back to 150 on the fiberglass and the UHF remained at detuned to 427 throughout except where it wasn't uh, enclosed and then the fiberglass. Uh, a lot better results than the J-pole antenna or the Jim Slim rather. So damn, what's, what's going to be my solution to this now? Uh, either use a single band antenna like VHF uh, then you can hide VHF antennas into all these materials here and it only detune it by one uh, or two megahertz. You should still be within spec with your operating frequency, but UHF it seems like it'll jump quite a ways out. Uh, what I would do, I guess, I would get a uh, an antenna that looks like a pipe, you know, like one of these guys here. Not one of these guys, but usually they'll have a whip, uh, a uh, fiberglass whip to the properly tuned antenna and just paint it, paint it to look like an ABS pipe or electrical pipe or uh, PVC pipe, water pipe. Uh, make the antenna look like those materials instead of having those materials mask the antenna itself. That's what I would do and I think that would work even better than trying to uh, make your own enclosure because it'll definitely detune your antenna. As far as the Jim Slim antenna, that needs to be freewheeling out in the air like I said. Uh, there's no hope for that. But it's so camouflaged by nature anyway because of what, how it looks like, uh, you won't have a problem hiding it. Uh, I think on a few more videos I'm going to see the proximity of antennas to be placed near obstacles like uh, chain link fence, uh, ducting up there, you know, AC units and, and other crap that may be distorting your signal. Well, there you have it. Gorilla Geek going 10-10.